Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Rob Bear, and joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher and Wyatt Hurt. What's up, dogs? <laughs> Yo, dog, great to be here. Yeah, hey, what's up? I always, um, like, when certain people call me, I was like, Yo, dog. And, it, like, sometimes I still don't think they know what to say after that. <laughs> They're like, what? That's, you, you had me. I, was, I didn't know how to respond to that. Uh Yo, yeah, so uh, we're back from Adepticon. Rob, he drove. Why Both ways flew. uphill. Both ways uphill, yeah. It's only like a 15-hour drive. There's somebody in chat that drove further. Well, oh, he did it in geez. like two days or something. Yikes. I mean, flying was already a shit show. But I can only imagine driving. I've That's done fun. it before. As long as it ain't snowing, man, I've, I've flirted with the idea. And then I'm just like, man, it's it's really nice to just like get on a plane and then be home like two hours later. <laughs> I could I could see the appeal to that. Yeah, I played a Damn. Nintendo Switch on the plane. and listen to an audiobook at the same time. I can do one of those things at yeah. the same time. Yeah, I get it. Look, we beat it to death. Rod doesn't fly. OK, except for the times he has. <laughs> Except for if I had my own plane, I'd probably fly. Yeah. If I was flying. If he built it and he flew it. Well, Rob, you need to get on that. Come to more events. That'd actually be really convenient if you would build us up. Yeah, what a what a ball of power move to like you guys drove. I built my own plane and flew here. Yeah. Yes. That's right, Giggle Moosin. He's like, I did get my switch for Christmas. Shout out to Matt OTPHGZ for bringing me a Nintendo Switch. Because uh, I didn't get one for Christmas, turns out. People are all like, hey, you're so hard to shop for for Christmas. And I'm always just the one I'm like, yo, give me beard shaving equipment, whatever. And then the one year I'm like, I want that new Nintendo Switch. Crickets. I'm like, okay, I see how this is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just a thing you say. And then that's why you, you know, and then I play into it and I say, and you give me shaving cream. <laughs> then the one time I want some tight shit. Nobody but Matt from Tiger Strike Painting comes through. Hmm. The GCC. Yep, the GCC. Bam. Uh, we got so much to talk about. Uh, we're going to have uh, several round robins of Adepticon recaps. Rob obviously is going to do the tabletop marketplace the uh, for the news memorial desk. But, uh, you know, it's been a couple of weeks uh, since Wyatt was here. He went off, I think he did a tabletop tactics uh, and then the whole internet said he was uh, OP, uh, fucking di- uh, chess clock manipulating cr- crazy person. Actually, I think I think what happened was the internet did not like the podcast. That podcast in general, they didn't. They thought Wyatt actually brought some like <laughs> actually <laughs> grounded it. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's you know it's funny because like we made we made we took a lot of effort to make sure that what we were talking about was like prefaced and clarified nah, you and can't people still took it out of context. But the funny thing is that in the weeks after that, there were so many people asking all of these questions on how to use a chess clock. And I'm just like, well, if y'all listen to what we were talking about and actually like one of the biggest things we talked about was like, Hey, just read the rules on how to actually properly utilize the chess clock and the way it's supposed to be done. Um, Maybe they just need to read the rules or something. I don't know. But like, I thought it was a great podcast. We just had a lot of salty sallies out there. I mean, I put I put shit in bold and red in articles and people still miss it. Uh, people literally got upset about the name of the new Space Marine tank being Kratos that GW stole the name. I'm like, yeah. what are you going to sue mythology? Like, just I mean, sue the heavens, just, baby. If we had reading Rainbow Saw on the air, this wouldn't be a problem. Rob. All of our. Why did you leave us? Tank like back in the day, everybody read everything. It's in a book. It's true. It's reading Rainbow. That was a the gangster <laughs> song of my life in childhood. I can't go anywhere. 
Guy gets tears. <laughs> tears. Well, let's do it because we haven't had a would you rather because yeah. you know, in a minute. So, and we've had much. I mean, okay. First off, yes, there was a uh, very controversial uh, Instagram post that I made from a Target in Chicago <laughs> that does prove that Miracle Whip is Irrefutable proof. In fact, don't care about your feelings. It is factually managed. We actually went back and changed that sign after we left. To just say Miracle Whip is mayonnaise. No, nah, they just said it just said uh, it's, it's mayonnaise. mayonnaise, not salad dressing. Yeah, they got rid of it. Uh, also, some controversial posts from uh, Rob Bear from Long John Silver chains. Oh, yeah. There, but the thing is, they don't make new ones. They're always onboarded on a KFC. Which think See, about I didn't know. I think about the poor, out. the poor assholes who are just trying to get like a three piece and a biscuit or the fucking shrimp bites. You know, at the. KFC, which is balling, and then you're just like next to this, like they share a wall with a Long John Silvers like, or a Taco Bell. God damn! So that's all. Would you rather content? Wyatt, would you roll out to your cave of wonders, please? Yeah. Would you rather teach an entire old folks' home how to use smartphones, <laughs> or <laughs> teach a dog how to wipe its ass? Is there a timer on this? Like, if I fail to secure the, nope. you, you, your life is devoted to this until it is accomplished. Just one, just one dog. Yeah, I can teach a dog. Not teach them, but teaching like a, a whole. I had to teach my dad how to use a computer. I mean, or the internet. It's harder than you realize, Rob. Dogs do not have thumbs. Okay, hold on. Yeah, wipe, but, thinking, but can I teach him how to wipe his ass? Like, by like. Carpet dragging it or something no, like yeah, that. Can't, can't drag it on the carpet. That's no. Because then your dog would just be dragging his asshole over the carpet. That defeats yeah, but what if I got like a toilet like paper a, carpet? Yeah, you get like some sort of pad or Am something. Am I not getting extra like credit for pad. teaching my dog how to fucking drag his ass on the like the puppy pad? No. Good, good. So I gotta teach a guy who doesn't have thumbs to do something impossible? That's literally impossible. That's literally impossible. Uh, I mean, I would argue that teaching an entire old folks home how to use smartphones is Depends. Impossible. The old folks home is uh, is it like the registered people at that home or the people I have to teach or is it a revolving door endlessly? No, it's like it's the people there when you show up. Snapshot the people there, I take the old folks home. Yeah, I mean, if like you could just be like tech support for them. Well, he said it's my life's work until my task is complete. All I got to do is teach one of them. They get oh you know they got their own phones. <laughs> it's, I'm horrible for thinking this way, but I think why no, they got their own phones. Where I'm at. <laughs> you, you know they got the jitterbug phone, right? It's like got bigger buttons and shit, so they can like press them. It's like a thing. It's called jitterbug. Like I'm not old enough to know what a jitterbug is, dude. Well, they named it that because it's like after the gin is probably gonna song. fucking say it's got to be like an iPhone, dog. Yeah, I mean a smartphone. Yeah, like an actual. They can't physically use that. Like, for, first of all, I have a hard time using the iPhone because sometimes the circulation in my in my fingers is well, you're a cold blooded reptile, So it doesn't recognize that my fingers are touching the phone because they're not the proper temperature. So I have an issue with that. And I know people older than me are going to have circulation issues. Yeah, see, in chat gets what I'm saying. I'm going to go find the one reasonable tech savvy old person. Get him proficient on a smartphone. Wait five years. I win the challenge. Well, you teach everybody in the home, dude. You can't yeah. teach one person. So I know, but you said it snapshotted at, like, at that day. In about five years, they're not all going to oh, be there. Oh, Jitterbug has a smartphone, guys. That's obviously, that's cheating. That's that Shadow Realm territory? That's, come on. Yo, Jitterbug has a smartphone now. It's called the Smart 3. Okay, Look Jin, these big does, the jitter phone, does the Jitterbug count as a fucking smartphone for the purpose of this challenge? No. Oh, come on, man. It says smartphone. <laughs> I mean, the gin is also. Damn, who, it's only 20 bucks a month. If you buy a jitterbug, I swear to God, too. <laughs> I swear to God. You should do it for the memes. Do it, Rob. Uh, look at how big these buttons are. <laughs> Dude, I'm serious. Kenny, pull this up on the screen. Oh, my God. <laughs> look up jitterbug, jitterbug smart three. All right, I have to see this now. Jitter bug smart three. 
for everybody who is, uh, you know, Dan listening to this podcast. Two forty nine a month. How is this? This how is this different? It doesn't have any buttons. It's a smartphone. That's what I'm saying. It's a smartphone. Oh, the ginger said it's a smartphone. They're big. It's just the apps are larger. They got voice typing, video chat. So it yeah, is a it is a touchscreen phone. phone. It's yeah. not what I thought. It just okay. is like blown up. I feel like I have these settings in my in my iPhone. I can make. They it got out. an that's, urgent that's, response button. A certified fair. urgent response agent will get you the help you need. I feel like I need that. <clears throat> All right. So what's the ruling, Jen? I have it on the screen. Yeah, you can use that. It's just like you still have to teach them how to use it, oh, yeah. how to like set up their their texts and emails and how to use Netflix. And so if I fail to teach every person at all folks home before the first one expires, do I lose a challenge? Yo, listen to this. You can like speak to a reason. board certified doctor, a registered nurse, enjoy affordable car, ser- car service. Like, why don't we all have the Jira bug? Because we're not old. No, but... I can buy this right now. Buy it. <laughs> Fine. I'm just saying this sounds pretty sweet. It's it would go with your shoes. It would match your shirt and your shoes. So unlimited you're already pretty much there. Unlimited tax for $19.99 a month. Does does every Jerbo come with a free pair of pure white New Balance sneakers? There's worse things in life, Wyatt. <laughs> I'm going to do the old folks home because there's literally no way it's impossible to teach my dog how to wipe her ass. It's not going to happen. Can't happen. Especially since I've been wiping her ass for like the whole time she's been alive. She'll never go for this new thing. They have their own car service. A personal operator schedule a ride for you day or night. I need that sometimes at night. It sounds like a good deal for you, bro. I feel like, <laughs> you, dude, you've already convinced yourself. You don't have to convince us. Just if you, you're a grown man, if you want something, just buy it. Dude, they make this sound so good. Hmm. Yeah. Look at this coverage. Yeah, it, make, it seems like a good fit for you. And you should indeed. I support you in buying that. That's and fine. I'm going to be disappointed if you don't. And I'm going to buy several and teach uh, entire retirement home how to use it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I have to at this point. Look at this team. Look at this phone team. They got like they got outfits. They got like rapid. Oh, man, they look like superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Rob. <laughs> buy the fucking phone. Fucking ridiculous. Tabletop marketplace. Do the news. And don't talk about that phone. <laughs> I was like, I was just hungry. <laughs> <ugly. laughs> this just said, did you know the Jitterbug 3 comes with $19.99 free unlimited texting after you night? Superheroes. <laughs> Dude, I'm serious. Go look it up. All right, I'm done. I don't want to be done, but I'm done. All right. On uh, on the G-Dub new release side of things, uh, not too crazy of stuff. We got the Battlezone Frontierist Nakhmun plastic box of terrain, box of terrain, $220. Yes, $220. That is an American dollars. Um, so we did the value breakdown on it. It's a good value-ish uh, if you take into account the $60 cardboard boards, but I don't feel like anybody values cardboard boards at $60. Uh, Hobos. Them. Oh, no. They definitely don't value them $60. Yeah, not those ones. Because um, they're hard to rip up. You can't put them inside your clothing to keep you warm. So, I don't feel like, I don't feel like that's an accurate, like, hey, this is value. Because GW's not even putting those on their, their you know, giving them retailers. Like, they're, they're web only. So if you take that into consideration, there's only about $80 with the value in this thing, which if you really want this terrain, you basically get one of the kits for free. So I could see, I could see, hey, it might be worth it for you. Um, but I feel like if that isn't the case, it's the box set isn't isn't the good buy and just pick one of these, you know, either the Hab Bunker for $80 or the Vox Antenna Auspex Shrine for $70 or the Landing Pad for $70 uh, might be for you. 
Something I also noticed in the in the images is it looks like you can put the the hab bunker on top of the landing pad, which looks pretty cool. Um, you know, just the thematic terrain wise, I suppose. Um, is that worth one hundred fifty dollars? No. I'm going to go with no. But, you know, there's some folks out there that might, might want that sort of thing. I don't know. Um, so I feel like this one's a, kind of like a hit or miss, mostly a miss on the uh, on the value proposition this week. Now, th- that being said, they are going to have some sort of rules. We don't know what they are. Maybe they're a must have. Maybe they're not. Don't know yet. You know, that will factor into it quite a bit, I'm sure. Um, but right now, I'm just like, mm. I don't know. I just hope it's push fit and easy to put together because <laughs> that would kind of make it worth it as far as like assembly wise. Right. Uh, they're also coming out with some MTO old Eldar uh, pewter miniatures. The Har- the old Harlequin troop, uh, Death Jester, Shadow Seer, Farseer with Spear, Farseer with Staff. Uh, they're all $32. Uh, the box sets of the Harlequins are $55. Those are old Peter ones that came out like, I want to say like 15 years ago or so. Um, and that's all the big releases for this week. Of course, the rest of the Eldar wave will be in stores um, this weekend, actually hitting store shelves along with the Tempest of War card pack that we're not really going to talk a whole lot about today, but uh, it seems pretty interesting. It might be a really good way to kind of pick up and play games of 40k without a lot of hassle and pregame mustard phasing uh so to speak so that's kind of neat uh th- those are 32 dollars if you want to pick them up um it's definitely worth picking them up this week if you're interested in them because chances are they're not going to get a reprint and probably go up in value on the secondary market uh, i also noticed if anybody was at adepticon and picked up that um that new primaris combat uh company champion that looks really sweet. He was $38 at the event. They are going for roughly $80 to $100 on the secondary market, aka eBay right now. Um, so that's kind of interesting uh, when you start thinking about it because you can basically, if you picked one up, like triple your money, I guess. Um, they were limit one per person, but they said they might be selling more on Sunday. If you went back, you could get multiples. I don't know. I didn't go back on Sunday, so I can't tell you. Um, so just something to think about if you're looking at picking it up. Big news today on the card scene, um, trading card circuits, uh, Magic the Gathering announced the return of the Pro Tour, which is kind of a big deal and probably won't resonate with a lot of you out there unless you've kind of been around the game store scene for a number of years. And like, well, they took it away. Uh, Star City actually liquidated their whole staff of pro tour and competitive magic writers uh, recently. So uh, they might be kicking themselves right now uh, for that move, but um, it's coming back. There's going to be, I think top prize is $500,000. So half a million dollars, Um, lots more details coming out soon. But the good thing is that they are going to involve local game stores, which is pretty huge because there's going to be a big pivot, I think. This might be my my 85% Rotten Tomato score uh, that Kenny likes to talk about. Uh, there's starting to become a lot of uh, pivot to actually being just a straight retailer out there. Because uh, if you look up some stuff, that some of the statements that Kohl's have made, you know, the retailer, they're like, oh, we're a lifestyle company and things like that. And every retailers going to like subscription model and, and and it's it's not it's not a big ask right now and i think that will follow suit a lot in the game store industry because um providing a premium play experience and locking in pre-orders and giving customers the access to the things that they need that they generally have to fight over because of the supply chain and the way things are right now i think is kind of the way things are moving um they talked a little bit about this at Gamma. So be on the lookout for that and a lot of game stores pivoting in the near future. I had some really interesting conversations with a lot of retailers. We drove around in Chicago, went to a couple of game stores, uh, some of the bigger ones, and um, and had a lot of interesting discussions with some major metro uh, market stores there just to kind of see how things were. And it was, I think it was a good exchange of ideas. And, um, you know, I think the hobby in general is on the right path 
in general? Overall. Overall. In, overall. That's a good thing. Why are you smirking um, when you say that? Because I can't say that is the case for Games Workshop. In, I mean, that was the biggest complaint from literally everybody I talked to. It's an. I'm not. I'm not questioning you. I was yeah, just commenting to your smirk. It's rough. Um, well, you know I like it. Uh, I do. A lot of the I board- used to have a rant window that I just recently deleted that said what your current rant level was at. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it. I thought I was deleting layers. You should. You should put that on there because I didn't know you did that. That's hilarious. <laughs> um. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Horace Heresy rules. A lot of the playtest rules have been spoiled. We've seen rules for Primarchs. We've seen rules for key units. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a new tank coming out called the Kratos. Oh, um, man, he can't use that name. That's owned by right. the heavens. I, I agree. I the agree. Pantheon. So Zeus would like a word to see you in court. <laughs> I believe the the best quote, the best Zeus quote was, don't F with me or I'll shove a lightning bolt up here. You know what? (laughs) See if anybody gets that movie reference. Anyways. um, So Horse Heresy is looking good. Uh, Looks like there's going to be four box sets. That was the big rumor. You know, of course, they'll spread them out like they did with Indominus. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be a $300 box set, give or take. Uh, So don't know if that ask is uh, is going to be met. But it's coming. It's happening probably in June. And we'll see. Very exciting times for sure all the way around. Um, Speed Paint release from Army Painter last week. Unfortunately, here in the States, there was a bit. There will be a bit of a delay. Apparently, there was a some sort of shipping accident. And some stores will be getting uh, the rack system. Some stores will be getting the paints themselves the starter sets a little bit of a delay it's going to be some insurance claims involved and things like that so might not be as smooth of a launch as they intended especially after the whole air quotes reactivation issue uh came to light which is simply put people not using speed paint the right fucking way mm, rad level just increased uh, rob <laughs> used to swear he used to know it's serious I did use a swear. Um, it just amazes me. And you can't it, use that on a jitterbug, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure jitterbug is probably just also a dating app for old people. Oh, I wonder if it has a dating app. I'm going to have to look at that. It surely does. That would be great. <sighs> Anyways, um, we saw a Chaos Knight previews at Adepticon. I think that was probably my, my most favorite. Uh, we know there's an army box coming out. It's going to have the new Chaos Knight in it, two of the uh, War Dogs in it, the data cards, and the new Codex. That will come out ahead of the main uh, Chaos Knight launch. Probably there will be something in between that before the actual all the Codex come out. The, supposedly the Chaos Knight and the Imperial Knight Codexes will come out at the same time. Um, There'll probably be data cards for Imperial Knights. So that's really interesting to see. Hopefully, uh, I assume it's just going to be an upgrade screw put in with the normal Chaos Knight Renegade box set, if I had to guess. Haven't seen it yet. Haven't broken it down yet, but it looks like it's the same kit. It's just an upgrade screw, which is fine. We haven't seen that before. Also, interestingly enough, if you look on GW site, currently all the Knight models are all the same price, whether it's uh, Questor's class, Renegade, or Dominus, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, because when the Dominus came out, they were more expensive. And now everything's $170 US. So it's all coming uh, full circle. Joy Toy announced a uh, new uh, action figures coming out. It looks like a really sweet Venable Dreadnought that you, if you flip up the little, the little hatch, you see a dude, not a dead dude, just a dude in armor running it. So, you know, it's not a robot. Um, I kind of thought that that would be the case because you can't put out a kid's toy with a corpse a dead, yeah, with a dead dude inside of it. Um, but they did it right. And it looks good. There's also the space Marine heroes from the dark Imperium box, you know, the ancient, um, the, uh, the two lieutenants, I guess they were are coming in, uh, um, 
uh, I guess a three pack. Also, Entertainment Earth announced that they will be doing they will be doing fulfillment for Joy Toy figures. Most of them are coming out in August. Uh, I think we have a post going out tomorrow on it. So if you want to check out the whole availability, um, the prices are pretty good, to be quite honest. And you know, it's all coming out, out way ahead of anything from GW. So that's pretty cool to see. And last but not least, Dark Tide got its official release date today, the video game. Um, that's the 40K version of, of Urban Tide, if you're not familiar with it. That will be coming out on September 13th, 2022. Originally supposed to come out this spring, but it looks like it got pushed back again. Um, hmm. In the video, it's kind of hilarious because they're like, aren't you guys supposed to be somewhere? And they're just like sitting there playing cards. I thought it was funny, a little cheeky. You know, sometimes you got to poke fun at yourself that you may in fact be a lizard you just I missed that comment you just say you're a lizard no okay I said sometimes you just gotta make fun of yourself <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much all I got on the uh, it's the old tabletop market watch this this go around thank you Rob I almost did not fall asleep that time Thanks for hanging in there. I almost fall asleep every podcast. I'm getting old, man. I understand you now. <laughs> in April, right around the corner, it's my 39th birthday. The 39, huh? Yeah. Is your birthday still on Arbor Day? April 22nd, is that Arbor Day? Or Earth was, day? Is that Earth that? Day? Earth, what are those? One of those days. Yeah, man. 39, I'm basically dead. What's it like to be old? I, I, I get sleepy during podcasts. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's like. I mean, technically you've been up the same, you know, because when I wake up, I still see you active on the internet, so. In a 24-hour cycle, we're definitely up the same amount of time. <laughs> Agree. <sighs> that's right. Chat. They're like, yep, you're going to be dead real soon. Rip. We can get you a nice uh, smartphone to use. Um, I might need that jitterbug after all. <laughs> Randy Savage was a primary. Says 39. Do you get white nose hairs? Bro, they're all white. I like to call them platinum highlights. If they, I have a, a lot of platinum highlights in my nose. And they like to thread into my mustache to become one entity. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, so something that's not bad. I think we did it. As, uh, as of just a few minutes ago, throwing it over to Wyatt. Shout out some patrons. Yeah, we hit our we hit our big goal. 100 patrons. What do we, what do we get, Rob? Some uh, wow, t-shirts? Hope. Well, the I'm plan not- is, is that we're going to do annual s- signups. They said, now that we're there, they, it's, by all metrics on the internet, it seems like you have to have about 100 patrons on Patreon before they decide you're real. And they unlocked that feature on a new Patreon platform. And part of that was going to be custom tees. So like you do, you sign up for our annual, you, we'd have a little form, dispense a tee to you with like your, you know, form handle on the back, cool new long war shirt design on the front. You give you that, you get that up front and it'd be like our new round of custom tees in exchange for annual signups little money-making scheme on our part, you know, a little hustle with a little instead of on your part, you know? So I just looked at it. It looks like it, it's going to let us now. <gasps> oh, my God. Um, and we can also set a discount to offer for annual members as well. Dope. Um, but you have to put a phone number on here. We have to have a verified phone number. So, Kenny, I'm going to... I've never logged into it. Don't make it my phone number. It's going to make I me. I want to put your jitterbug on there. Oh, my God. Of course you are. <laughs> uh, it's in a good call I think back. I have a Google Voice number set up, so I'll just put my. Good callback. Thank you. Make sure it doesn't two-stage authenticate through your fucking weird number. Oh, uh, that's a problem, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Do we? I don't know. I'll figure it out. So we did it. Wyatt. Thank you, guys. Yeah, let's give a shout out to Michael Gil Martin, Evan Williams, George Cruz, 
Taco Will Jr. <laughs> nice. And Joe Lancaster. Thanks, guys. And I think uh, Mantis Toboggan came out to us at the... Uh, he did. Um, doubles event. The doubles event. It was like, hey, it's me. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Tight. So, yeah, we did it. Look, uh, we'll have annual subs out here real soon after we have another little, little meeting. Uh, good timing because it's tax season, which means all the money we've made on Patreon is probably just enough to pay our taxes on Patreon. Uh, can can confirm. Can also, confirm. if you pay the um, um, Vimeo. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's sub. it. Mm. So we paid all uh, but. Good news, we didn't have to pay the state of North Carolina franchise fee this this month, this year. Ooh. That's a win. That is a win. Anytime the business doesn't cost money to keep going is a success. (laughs) Every year. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Long War LLC. (laughs) So, cool new things in the horizon. We'll make an announcement as soon as possible, and we'll unlock annual subs. And so you'll get your subscription to the platform for a year and this cool fucking T-shirt. So, really excited about that. But tonight, we have a bunch of topics to cover because this is our Adepticon recap show. Adepticon is the biggest miniature wargaming trade show in the world. This is the first year it's been back. It was the first event to have to cancel uh, in oh, March. It was. Dang. It was, yeah. Hmm. The whole country, right? Like, starting in California. Safe that was homes. a wild ride, dude. I think it was like March 10th. Dude, yeah. it was it was so it was within like two weeks. Two like, weeks, it was, just, yeah. Boom. It was two weeks, and then everyone was waiting with bated breath. It's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to be a big deal. And then it got canceled. Then it canceled again. Well, canceled. They recovered. Uh, they probably used their event insurance, and then they just didn't put another show on the next year. And now they're back. So it's been a big fucking deal. So many, you know, people come together at this event. It's definitely one of the biggest. It's a true convention experience. It's so fun, and. We finally did it, and we have a recap. And so I wrote some things down. I'm looking down here at my chicken scratch. Oh, doubles. Long War doubles at Adepticon. This is actually the origins. This is where it all started. We did this years ago. We are like, let's do a Long War doubles. And let's, let's, let's be one of the first events, if any, to bring in a podcast entity and just onboard like our favorite event and just like be a volunteer staff to sell some tickets. We, they don't pay us, right? They, get, they do give us uh, a hotel room for the convenience, uh, but then we do everything else on our own, and they provide the prize support, and they provide the, the, the medals, everything. They do a great job oh, of yeah. that. So this year, what was the number you said, Why 116 teams? Uh, after yeah, yeah, so it was a sold-out event. We, we had 120 tickets, which sold out. It was fantastic. And then we had 114 teams show up, and we also added two more teams, so 116 teams day of. Fuck yeah. What a solid event. I mean, the number, I mean, that's over 200 players. That's fucking incredible. And yeah. we do a hobby event. Anybody who's listened to our podcast and doesn't know that we uh, bring hobby back. Okay. And so that's what that means is bringing hobby scores back to 140K. This is a 30 percent battle point event 70 percent hobby score and over the years we've streamlined it removed as many bottlenecks as we could we use itc mission packet uh it's a hundred point scoring system as you guys might know if you play uh the gw gw uh, gt mission packets right you can get technically zero points all the way to 100 points right but technically it's 10 because you're not coming yeah, back without a pay to your stuff painted <laughs> so whatever you score that's your score. You keep it. it. doesn't matter if you got 47 points and he got 67 points. You got 47 points. That's part of your overall score bracket. Okay. We score people in a hobby painting capacity with a rubric that has been very streamlined and very cool. Shout out to Wyatt and Rob for workshop and that. We score people. Mostly all, Wyatt. And that's our score. And then the players have the opportunity to police their opponents with a player policing score that is a uh, sportsmanship and combined composition score. So, like, it's become harder to game if you're just dick stomping because it's one set of scores, right? So that helps people learn how to be cooperatively competitive. Uh, and it's like how tournaments used to be. 
So we have some winners here. We, you know, we did a big award ceremony on the day. It was fucking amazing. Shout out to everybody who came by and said hi. It took selfies. It was an amazing event. People brought the hobby so hard. There was cosplay, everything. Now, mm-hmm. we did have a uh, pretty close event in some ways. But I'll start off right here with uh, Best General. Right? In the past, Best General was oh, oh, the guy who got the highest battle points, but he rarely won overall. This is that's historic. And so John Miller, his team, he's the team captain. So shouting out the team captains. Uh they got three at perfect three hundred, the only ones who did it. Uh he got a pretty uh low composition slash sports score. He was on he was aware and he was doing his best and he kept coming back up and he's like, should I drop? Man, I, I think I'm making it, you know, bad for people. You know, he was very aware of his of how he was interacting with people and he was doing his best and he was just I was like you just get he's he realized he was giving out perfect scores and he was receiving really low scores and I was like we have a best general award you know as long as you don't get three zeros and we have to talk to you you're fine Hmm. and he didn't get three zeros he only got one and he got a a 45 and a 60 out of 150 so he did a good job shout out to that team best general perfect 300 we also had a, a theme award that we actually forgot that we used to we used to score themes separately, and then we streamlined it, and we still had trophies for it, and it was perfectly timed because we used to just do this for like the best themed ar- like team spirit like army and cosplayers. Well, we like we had this medal, and we were like, oh yeah, there's a dude literally cosplaying as a fucking space marine playing in our vet the whole time. <laughs> in costume. costume the whole the time. whole time the whole time. Shout out to Alexander DeMichael, team captain. Bro, for wearing a close. fucking full fucking space screen outfit the whole fucking time. I think he even I saw him going in the bathroom with it. Well, he had to like he had to like take the top half off of the table. Yeah, it was still. He was like stomping his way into the bathroom with the legs on. I don't think he could take the legs off, so he just I guess he just dropped the cod piece. I guess he had just, a like, zipper. Just power stancing it in the bathroom. <laughs> That's a wide stance for sure. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, he was wearing like oven mitts and shit too, under, like <laughs> under everything. It was, it, and he had a. Did you see? He didn't. He couldn't touch anything. He just had a little like a like a fucking like cribbage like pushing stick or whatever. Oh, <laughs> he's just moving his fucking tanks around. He's like, "This is the best I could do." <laughs> um. So, best sports. It was like a billion way tie, which is what happens in sportsmanship awards. So what we use as a tiebreaker is highest battle points because that's more impressive, right? To maintain a, a strong winning presence while also allowing people the opportunity to still score you high because you know you were a good person, you you were very social, whatever you had to do, it's more impressive. And that goes to the team of Colin and Liz from Colorado Springs. People actually know. Incredibly, from Colorado Springs. Yeah, they, oh. incredibly beautifully painted, almost perfect painting score army on top of everything else. They crushed it. Uh, now <clears throat> we had a straight tie for first overall, uh, but the tiebreaker in that capacity is battle points. Okay, but it was still a tie and. Shockingly, or not shockingly, our boy Matt Aaron, he had the best painted army in the room. There was a like a four way tie for Max Payne. His his army was so tight, so and, good. And so, he, even though he tied for best overall with his team, and but he lost to the winners because they had a higher battle points. He won best painted, and I think he won best painted in the championships as well. He did. He had his medal. <laughs> nice. That's a clean sweep. He arguably has the best painted Death Guard army in the world. Right? So, congratulations to Mayor. And he fucking killed it with his Project Mayhem display board and his fucking hidden Nurgle challenge and his beautiful paint jobs. If you, if you follow, you know, any Death Guard forums or groups on the internet, you've probably seen it. Now, the winners also brought the heat with a near-perfect painting score. They were cosplayed. They brought knights, and they were cosplaying as the fucking dudes who drive the knights. 
Like, it was pretty fucking incredible. And that team was first overall tag team champions of the world. I uh, went to the team uh, captained by Jason Krug. And congratulations to those guys. They really did fucking kill it. And it was awesome to see all the people. So many people were cosplaying. So many people were doing like wizard stick challenges with their beer cans and shit like that. I mean, oh, it was. Okay. These guys are going so hard. I mean, even with the thousand announcements I made to clean up everything, there's always cleanup afterwards. I still filled an entire huge trash container of fucking liquor bottles and beer cans. <laughs> that's how hard our event is. That's how, that's how hard it goes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, it's, it comes with the territory. So congratulations to the guys. Shout out to Wyatt for holding it down on the app. Rob for his spreadsheet kung fu. And I think it's another one of the books, you know, just fucking successful long war doubles and we'll publish these results if not already published for everyone to see I think it already happened uh, yeah put it on on the socials I sent it to the Depths kind of email everybody but I'm not sure if that happened mm. now let's kick it over to Wyatt first so we're going to do a little segment on our Adepticon recap this one is about the vendors hall oh like, yeah vendors hall shout outs best experience what is what what tickled your pickle? Oh man! Well, I mean, we we do have to shout out our boy Jason with uh, Monument Hobbies and Pro Krill for just crushing it at the event. Um, but yeah, like I always really enjoy going to Adepticon because there's like games you've never seen before. There's new new vendors with like hot new minis that you've never seen before. All sorts of fun stuff. And I found a game, and I've I'd known about it for a little bit. Uh, so it's it's been out there for a little while, but um, it's called Rumble Slam. Hmm. And if you don't know about Rumble Slam, it is wrestling in the same way that Blood Bowl is football. So Blood Bowl is fantasy football. Rumble Slam is fantasy wrestling. So it's super fun uh, tabletop skirmish game. So you, you have like a you can even do tag teams. So you can do like 2v2 tag teams with those kind of rules. You can do uh, like an amalgamation of a bunch of different characters and like a big team brawl. Um, lots of really cool models, a lot of which are like pop culture references. So they'll have like Hulk Hogan, but it's he's like an orc. So he's like, the, the, uh, I forget his name. I think it's just Gunn. Um, but they have like movie references. They have wrestler references. Lots of super fun stuff. So I got into that game. A couple of our other friends bought into that game. So I'm going to start painting all that stuff up. We even to get in the mood before we went back down to the vendor hall. We watched on the YouTube video oh, algorithm yeah, in like, the hotel, like a half an hour straight of Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, the best of Macho Man, just to get in the mood. I even threw my neck trying to do an impersonation. Oh yeah, <laughs> so those traps. Really Gotta have them hot traps. Rumble Slam. Expect to see it. It's coming soon. We're we're talking about seeing how active we can get. We talked to them. Very, very cool guys. Oh, now, what, was the name, what was the name of that company again? The actual uh, TT Combat. TT Combat. They do drop zo- drop zone commander. Is that the game? Yeah. Yeah. They have a masquerade ball. They do have a couple other games out there that people are aware of. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, Rob's, Rob says he has a funny story from um, his vendor hall experience. So... Wyatt was like, yo, you need to go check out these Marvel Crisis Protocol tokens. And I was like, okay, cool. Where are they at? Mizo, Mizo Minis. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I go over there, but I got it mixed up because my Marvel Crisis Protocol mats I got from Mats by Mars. So all these all these things sound the same when you've been drinking. And, and I go over there and I'm like, I walk up to the table. First of all, I was already confused because... A guy, some of you may or may not know, John Damaris used to own Muson Minis and he sold it to another guy. Then he did Art of War for a while, coordinated with them, and I don't think he's affiliated with them anymore. I actually know where he is now, but it's not really for me to say. Um, and so I walk up to the table and I was like, yo, where's Mario? Because Mario's the guy that runs um, Mass by Mars. <laughs> and they all look puzzled. And I was like, what did I say? And then it was funny because behind the little curtain, that separates the booths, this head pops out and he's like, I'm Mario. 
<laughs> I was like, I didn't know what was going on. I might have been drinking again. And and they're like, and the dude's like, oh, you mean Mass by Mars? And I'm like, oh, did I? Why am I here? Am I in the wrong was, booth? Is this the bathroom? Yeah. And I was like thinking about it. I was like, wait, why am I here? And then I started looking around. I was like, oh, the Marvel tokens. And they're like, yeah, we got them. And they're like, is, you know, we were talking about it and like what all you get. And they, they're acrylic tokens. And it's cool because they have they have a single token for like extracts and a secure. So you don't have to have your whole like container full of like every stupid different art objective for Marvel Crisis Protocol. And I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. And um, so what I ended up buying was the they didn't have it there and I ordered it afterwards. There's a there's a, a, a tracker for your points and your turn that comes with also the tokens for uh, the first tokens like shock and all your status tokens. They came out like the first like series of the game also comes with some power and some wounds. And then they came out with like little token packs afterwards. It was it was like, I don't know, 70, 80 bucks in tokens, whatever, acrylic stuff. They're, they're cool and I'll use them. And I, so I bought those <laughs> and I didn't, they also have markers and gauges or markers and templates that look really sweet, but I already painted mine. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. So then I walked over to, and I talked to, uh, I, th- I talked to Mario and he had some really cool stuff, you know, because I was really worried when I ordered those mats because the vinyl can scratch, right? Like we've seen these mats before and they're vinyl and they scratch, but the price point's so good. It's like 35 bucks for this mat. And I was like, well, I don't care if it scratches up. It gives me the time because they do these overlays with all the objectives and they have one for 40K with the core rule objectives. Like you can get you can get the 40K size mat with all the objectives in it like an, as an overlay, which is great. But the new material does not scratch. And I was really impressed by it. And I sent him an email and I was like, look, I ordered your mat. I kind of expected it to suck a little bit, but it didn't. Like, I appreciate that you guys, you know, upgrading your products and doing stuff like that dope and you know we talked for a little while on email and they're like you know come by adepticon cool but he has this new material and i took a video of it but i haven't posted it anywhere where you can literally crumple up the mat it's vinyl it's some sort of material it's not a vinyl you can crumple it up in your hand and then throw it down and it like literally loses all its wrinkles and lays flat and i was like this is dope and he's like yeah we're coming out with those soon and i was like nice um, so a little weird, a little bit of the shiny mixed with drunk Rob doing drunk Rob things, but it all worked out, man. Sounds like you found the booth for you. So we got pro wrestling, new game aids, which obviously is Rob's jam. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like so far. That's pretty on brand with the show, right? Pro wrestling and game aids. Yeah. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> it Checks out. <laughs> Oh my god! No, like I actually, I only got to tour the vendor hall really in depth on the last day after you guys had, and why it took me on a like a journey, oh. and and he, he took me to all the coolest spots. Nice, and uh, so they're all a lot of dope shit, right? A lot, a lot of fucking dope shit. But uh, I got sucked into uh, Journeyman Miniatures booth. Oh, he told me to go by there. Yeah, they have a bunch of really cool, larger scale art piece type minis. Mm-hmm. Let me go look them up. Like a lot of, tri- like a lot of baller artists, a lot of uh, IPs that they have purchased and licensed. Like a lot of stuff you might recognize that it's there. It's not just inspired by it is licensed. Uh, a lot of traditionally sculpted stuff. A lot of their bigger stuff is traditional sculpt. Like really cool and ch- like just real charming, but also real baller shit. Some of the stuff was painted and they could sh- and they showed it to us and some of it was just resin and I took one home to paint. Uh, they're traveling oh, back I've to France. Some of these. They're, they're, they're really busy right now, but I do plan on getting with them and getting some painting promos because, you know, busts are something I don't do a lot of. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't only do busts. They do a lot of stuff like full diorama, like pieces and things like that. Like it, it was incredible. So it was journeyman miniatures they have an instagram account you can see their shit uh but i got sucked into that that and i didn't expect to because you know i've seen all the cool big models you know and they really 
they they really had they did they they tickled my pickle <laughs> like with, with with their gear and how's yeah. that feel was it good it tickled mm. <laughs> so the vendor hall was popping uh a lot of the usual suspects were there uh you know oh yeah but ultimately these are our favorite stories and our favorite experiences in our memory now as dumb as they might be as dumb as they may be is you know Let's so let's do a let's move a depth con recap. It's a lot of stuff to cover. Community catch up. I wrote this down. So we got to meet a lot of people uh, for the first time and for the thousandth time. Like we got to reconnect with some people, meet them for the first time, everything like that. And I'm sure some of these meetings stick out in your mind. So why? What do you like? Who you like to shout out? Yeah, we get to uh, we get to kick it with our. Well, your friend, Matt, who I'd met for the first time, that was a lot of fun getting to talk about submarines and then getting super addicted to Rumble Slam. Uh, I got to meet um, Clayton from the uh, he's a fan of the podcast, fan of the stream. Oh, Go Boy. You can't forget about Go Boy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Go Boy 76. Not, not to not to be Regular confused Go- with the other Go Boy. So I was also said, there. He was also there. Um and uh, he gave me some some like chaos minis that were legit like older than I am. So I'm going to be painting some of those up for the stream. Like he gave me a, a dreadnought, like a chaos dreadnought that was made in 1988. Super cool looking. Some terminators. Older than you? Yeah, dude. Two years older than me. Um, so I was really excited for that. Um, got to see my friend Tim. Like that's been our because he lives in Michigan. So that's been our thing is like we meet up for Adepticon every year hadn't been able to so getting to see him and kick it was was really nice yeah you and uh, Matt got along famously there were some fun stories in the hotel rooms uh, <laughs> he was recanting us on his old submarine days and then I think he got his mind blown by Rob who was spitting all this knowledge about building the submarines back in the day himself I did a little sub work yeah, it's like you knew more than he did about the submarine he was on. <laughs> I think that blew his fucking mind. <laughs> um, I don't know. I know weird shit. <laughs> it's nothing personal. I mean, everything's personal. That's the point of life. Eh, it's all good. See, Rob, if you say things like you mean them, even if they're stupid sounding like I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. Why? That, like, I, I was there for many of those. I think we're gonna have some crossover here. Rob, who do you want to shout out? Um, man, there's, there's a lot of folks. It was cool to finally get to hang out with and see some of the some of the content creators that you know came out through the past two years of the pandemic that never really been out to things. Um, you guys, of course, have met uh, the guys from Dice Check. I haven't yet, mostly because. They're not within driving distance. Hmm. And uh, um, obviously, Goat Boy, Matt, uh, there was a, a bunch of folks that kept coming up. You know, um, obviously, can't shout out everybody, but. Uh, the tiniest Canadian. Oh, the tiniest oh, Canadian. Jesse, our, 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 yep. our free labor. Yep. <laughs> Everybody that helped, um, they don't have child labor laws in Canada, so like he's um, <laughs> maybe maybe the tallest the tallest Canadian, Eric, that lives in the the states now. Yep. Um, yeah, I saw him at the airport too. when I was when I was oh nice checking my bag. Even he was everywhere. Um, you know, I think uh, you know we're kind of everywhere. We we're, were fortunate enough to have a team of two there, and including myself. So I guess three and. uh um, you know, so we did the best we could cover the event. And I think, I think one of the things that, that I really wanted to convey on the site was what it was actually like to be there because, you know, everybody takes pictures of their painted stuff or the things that interest them. But, you know, it was really hard to actually see what it was like to be there. And that's, you know, what, what I think is important and what people want to see is what it's like to be there, not a top down stream of nine harlequins and nine harlequins and or whatever you know like what's it like to be there because i think next year we're going to see a real big bump and people coming coming back and 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 engaging with the hobby because 
you know, hopefully we're free and clear and everything's good in the world by then. Um, you, did, you did a good job getting those pictures scrambling to, I feel like that's a good, accurate, an accurate description of what you did is like try to give people that like uh, first person perspective of what it's like to be there. I, I think that's very important. I appreciate your, I appreciate your coverage of events like this. Cause it does like when I'm when I can't be there, all I have to do is click on your, your pictures and it feels like I'm there. You know, it's like, what about the ads? Do you click on those? I click on every ad nice. on the internet. Thank you. My computer has cancer now. The <laughs> internet the thinks you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 I've, I've had blocker dog. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, maybe one day I'll, be able to go to more events because I'll drive there but we're able to send people to, to events now I don't necessarily have to be to them all so that's great that's true well I shout out my boy Rob because I only see Rob once in a while these days because he doesn't fly oh me yeah you oh there's more than one Rob in the world there is <laughs> Rob Bear the le- the cat daddy himself <laughs> I got to see him. That was really cool. But it's like, you know, no time has passed. That's how it always is for us. You know, just you pick yeah. us up from the airport. That was awesome. We, you know, instantly went to Target, got to take a picture of a uh, Miracle Whip and explode the Internet. Miracle Whip is mayonnaise. It's a fact. Shout out to Andrew and Charlie uh, to your your crew. That was really cool to hang out with them. Uh, shout out to like Penny Duff, who's a fellow member of Long War TV stream oh, yeah, team. Duff was there. Yeah, it's really cool. He helps us out with our vet every time he's there. With our Reiner was there. Reiner yeah, was Duff there. Was, Duff was busy. Like I think all of his painting classes sold out. So like, congratulations for him. Yeah, he fucking he was putting in some work. Uh, we got to kick it with Brent from Coopertown Hobbies and Casey from Miniature mm-hmm. Rescue Online. They came by for some coffee. That was really cool to actually finally meet. The legendary Goobertown Hobbies in person, whom I've had many conversations with on the internet, but he's fucking goddamn amazing. He also came down and helped us a little bit with our judging, and he was kind of funny about it because he's like, I don't know, there's a lot of pressure. So he kind of just came around with me while we judged stuff. I was like, look, don't worry. What's going to happen is we're going to go, we're going to start judging armies. The person's going to be there with their army. They're going to be like, is that fucking Goobertown Hobbies looking at my army? He's like, come on, man. Within one second. That that occurred <laughs> within like one fucking second. Like we're there, and it was like, oh my god, is Brent from Goobertown Hobbies judging my army? Was, he was so happy. Like it was really cool to kick him with me. He's just as cool and genuine as you would ever expect. Mm-hmm. That hey, ballin'. Shout out a couple of my new students showed up. Shout out to my boy Lyndon, who's uh, Lyndon Arteritum online, Tiger Strike Painting. Uh, got to kick it with uh, Chaotic Painting, of course. Can't forget about Goat Boy. Go Go Boy seventy six. He brought back one of my one of the broken shot glasses. Uh, showcased it on my stream the other day. He got he was one of the only guys I mailed shot glasses to, and it broke. No, I shipped out like a hundred of these, and it's right here. And I brought it back with me, and I'm gonna glue this bitch back up. <laughs> <laughs> then drink out of it. I'm gonna glue this, I'm gonna glue it back up. I swear to you. Use it use it for your airbrush to dunk dunk your airbrush. I'm gonna drink out of it, dude. It's totally fine. He's overreacting. You not do that. <laughs> He's overreacting. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Got to meet up with uh, Scott Dominiac. I've met him before. I've talked to him many times. Uh, I got to meet Ninjon for the first time. Got to get a selfie with Kathy Wapple, the legend. So I got to meet you. Was she in Fort Wapple? Oh, she was just, yeah, I just saw her. By, yeah, she was chilling down at the painting section. Yeah, that's Fort, Fort Wapple. Yeah, Fort Wapple. Got a selfie with her the last day. Saw Zambies online. Never met her before. She was great. Lots of people came up, identified themselves as somebody who listens to our podcast. And let me say, yeah, let me say what? Um, Let me tell you, like, if you see us at an event, and I even saw in chat here, so I was like, oh, I saw you, but I was too shy to come and say hi. Don't come come say hi. I acknowledge that, but please come say hi. We are very open to that experience. It's half of why we do this. It makes us feel good and it's very validating. So, just know the next time you see one of us, one of us at an event, you know, come by. So, too many people to name, but, you know, I try to take as many pictures as I could with people. I know there's a lot of selfies floating around the internet with Rob, Wyatt, and myself. Post it up, tag us. You know, we'll come by and say hi. It see was, a Long John Silver somewhere. Yeah. Tag Kenny and Wyatt in it. Kara Quinn, <laughs> he's like, Kenny is shorter than you think. Yeah. Five, six. Uh, Me too. 
I'm about the same. Mm-hmm. It's but like every every picture I'm in, I'm always the same height as the person next yeah, to me. It's true. It's crazy. It's fucking true. And of course, Jason and Jentastic, Mike Mahabi's taking us out to dinner. That was amazing. God, what a sick experience. Went to Portillo's. It's gone a little downhill. So, you know, instead of 10, 10 out of 10, like an 8 out of 10, still ate every fucking bite. <laughs> but, you know. Is that why there was. A, okay, that makes sense. I forgot you guys did that. Yeah, you can't go there. It's. No, I did go there, but I went there for lunch. But then it was a clip on my cell phone for Portillo's at night because, like, I have the video camera in there that you probably didn't see. One of your guys was, like, was filming us? No, it doesn't film the cabin. It films it films the, the drive. Oh, you were filming us? Yeah, I was filming you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for what I did in your car, Rob. God. I don't know what you did in the There's car. Soup kitchen. There was a little bit of a soup kitchen going on. The old <laughs> scratch and jack, baby. Uh, that explains that clip. I was like, why was there a picture of Portillo's after dark? And uh, drive because we went there after dark. We were had to we had to yeah. get our energy stores back up after the soup yep. kitchen. A carb load. I, you know? I hope it went well. It did. It did. I'll well, have to check those tapes. That's, that's about all I wrote down, and we're definitely over time. So positive experience overall. You know, no, nah, definitely it's worth it's worth going to Adepticon if you go to one event. Here, try to make it a death to yeah, for sure. Um, and there was a whole nother venue that uh, only only one of our team went to, and that was where all the yeah. historical and other stuff was at Boomercon. And we didn't, <laughs> we don't call it that. It's a it was a satellite venue. I say it with love. You go to con. There was there was some controversy in Boomercon. Did you hear about it? Ah, <sighs> what now? Oh, this is it's funny because like us as 40k players, this is kind of cute. So like a guy won a Flames of War event. Okay. And because Flames of War does not have the skeleton, the structuring of rules to stop like weird random publications that are outdated from being used, he came up with this idea to like beat the system and yeah. use this like one super obscure old publication that was not invalidated to have this really janky like three nation army list and just destroyed the competition and oh they're upset about it <laughs> yikes oh well well I hope they figure that one out I mean dude it's it's not easy it's not you know as much as we're critical of GW it's not easy to keep track of all that stuff and um you know, make the necessary corrections in a way that's satisfying to everybody, I suppose. Um, but, you know, hopefully it all gets better. But counting down in my head to see how long it takes Rob to end his sentence in re- <laughs> I, You know, sometimes I start talking, I have no idea where I'm going. I see it. I've known Rob for over a decade. I watched his journey. his wheel spinning in his head, and I'm like, he's like, he's looking for his his, his line ender, and it's just spinning and spinning. He's like, okay, where are we going with this? Fuck it. And then, Jitterbug. you know, at least I'm mostly consistent with what I say. Because <laughs> somebody will be like, you said, and I was like, that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like something I would say. Eh. Like, you know, many deer are on my lawn right now, dude. Rob, we, we gave you the answer to this problem and you just refused to accept it. What, shoot the deer? I mean, that's what they're there for. Make some venison, dude. Mm, I do not like venison. What? Well, right. I was tricked at a young age to eat what I thought was not venison. And you ate Bambi. Venison. And I was like, this has traumatized me for the rest of my life. Mm, yeah. I can see that. And Rob loves deer, so he's just teasing. I don't love them. I just... I'm not going to shoot them. That's assuming, you know, I had a way to do that. All right. Well, Wyatt, you want to take us out of here? <laughs> yeah, Wyatt. Rob. Uh, uh, so much potential. 
<laughs> so much potential. All right. So that's it for this one, y'all. Um, thank you, everybody that supported us over on Patreon. We hit our big 100. That doesn't mean that if you weren't considering it, that to not go over there and longworn.net and give us some support yeah, because as it stands, it pays for our Vimeo account and pays us on taxes. We could use a little bit more read the room. <laughs> um, that is true. All these things are true. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to roll out that annual subs and do some uh, do some merch here in the near future. Um, and it'll be pretty dope. So head on over to the longworn.net for exclusive content and early access videos today. <laughs>